So there is actually a lot of church history in Iowa. I had a special privilege to serve um, across the river from Nauvoo. So we got to go to Nauvoo a lot. That's part of our mission. And um, obviously a lot of big things in the church happened there. And then also in Iowa City, where I also got to serve, um, is where the handcart company started. That's where the rail ended, was in Iowa City. And so there's a big memorial there. And um, there's actually a street called Mormon Trek Boulevard. So that was really helpful when we would ask if people ever heard of Mormons. And they're like, Mormon Trek Boulevard? And we're like, exactly, you know? So that was that was super good. Um, but yeah, a lot of people actually do know about Mormons out there just because of the history and stuff. Um, the mission has been around for a while. I'm pretty sure I'm not super keen on the history, but when I was there, there was around, there was close to 300 missionaries there. That was during the wave. It's kind of even out to probably like 250, 260 or so. And uh, there was a lot of sister missionaries. There's about 85 sister missionaries when I was there. Yeah, so I got to live with members and also live in our own apartment. Um, I personally prefer living with members. It was just nice to have a second family there. And people actually, like, care about the work you're doing when you come home. They're like, how was your day, you know? As opposed to coming home and you're just like, look at your companion. You're like, you know how my day was, you know? And uh, so I liked living with the members a lot. Um, Transportation-wise, I was really spoiled. And in the Iowa Des Moines Mission, there's 100 cars. So a lot of us drove cars. I was spoiled and had a car my whole mission. Really nice cars, too. I drove a Jeep Compass for nine months on my mission. So I was definitely blessed. And uh, But I think it's necessary because there's a lot of, like, snow and it gets really cold out there. So, so we wake up at 6.30 every morning. And the first thing we did after turning our alarm off was knelt beside our bed and had a companionship prayer. And then after we finished comp prayer, we'd have our personal prayers and just get ready for the morning. We'd exercise for a half hour, typically. If it was really cold, we wouldn't go outside. But uh, the latter half of my mission, I was re really good at exercising um, for a half hour in the morning. I lost 20 pounds on my mission, so. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd exercise and then from like 7 to 8.30, we'd get ready for the day and eat breakfast, do those sort of things, and right at 8 o'clock sharp. Um, we'd start personal study for an hour, and there's typically a desk. We'd just sit across from each other and study, and then, so, after companionship study, our district leader would call, and we'd have what we call a prayer of unity, where all the members in our district would be on the phone, and we would just have a prayer of unity to pray for our goals, um, to pray for the ward baptismal goals and the stake baptismal goals and just become united in our purpose and and maybe just share something cool that happened and then we would go off and go work and uh, come back for lunch for an hour and then finish working and come back for dinner if we didn't have a member meal I did get fed a lot so I had member meals quite a bit and then just work till 9 or 9 30 if you're in a lesson you come back. I had I had the opportunity for about a year of my mission to serve as a sister training leader. So I was a little different than like, I guess, normal missionary life. I was on exchanges a lot and um, doing a lot of administrational work, which is annoying at, at sometimes, but it's, it's how the mission runs and it's essential to it. So that was a cool opportunity that I had.